Master Art Series, which is made possible by a grant from the Naperville Sunrise Rotary Club. I am your host, Barry Skirkins. When a person mentions the Northwest Coast Native Arts, totem pole carvings jumps to mind. However, totem poles are not the only art form of the Northwest Coast tribes. One art form that plays a significant role to the tribal cultural heritage and daily life is the textile artist or weaver. From the clothes they wear to the baskets they use, the weaver produces many necessities used in daily life. In addition, they also produce ceremonial raiments which are adorned during special occasion. Please join me now as I talk with native Ketchikan artist Diane Douglas Willard as she shows us some of her weavings. If you could tell us a little bit about the uh, technical aspects uh, of the weave, um, I think that would complement what the uh, Wars has taught us. Okay. And you could start with any one of the baskets and uh, maybe explain the technique of how you uh, form the basket, how many different types of uh, vertical elements versus horizontal, and how you pick out your patterns. And oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, like I said, I've been weaving with Dolores for, you know, 20 years, and um, we like we live like a mile apart, but usually I see her when she's traveling because she is always she's traveling. She's always going. She is always traveling, so I'll see her in Sitka or Juneau or Seattle, but um, most of the material that I use is red and yellow cedar bark, so mm -hmm. the yellow cedar bark, this is two-strand twining, and the yellow cedar bark are the, the two pieces that I'm twining with right here. Okay. And the ones coming down are the red cedar bark, and then I use canary grass for the design. This design is going to be the cresting wave design, which is a, this is a special basket for one of my friends, and it's um, a seaweed gathering basket, where a seaweed gathering basket would be more this size. This is just a miniature, kind okay. of a, a nice little display piece. And the seaweed is um, gathered, and the spaces allow the seaweed to drain, so you're not packing around a whole bunch of seawater with you as you're bringing your seaweed up to the shore. Um, yesterday, my husband dried his seaweed, ground it up, and dried it, and it was dried so fast because it was oh, so, so warm hot. yesterday. Yes, yes. Yeah, and of course, these are not, you know, these are somewhat the style of what they used to use, but they're a bit more fragile than what they actually would use, so um, they're more for display than actual gathering. This is also red and yellow cedar bark, so the red goes up and down and the yellow goes around, and then the canary grass is a design there. And that one is a Hudson Bay blanket design. And all these design elements I've learned from Dolores. Oh, excellent. Um, one of the things that she told us is that 
she's never really created a new design. One time she created a new design and she was really excited about it. And then when you know she goes into a museum and sees the design on an old basket. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's really very difficult to create a new design because they've been used you know, over For and centuries. over again. I don't know if they're family designs or just ones that people tend to like to use over and over again. Um, on the inside, I see you have a form in here. I actually use a form because my wrists are not very strong. Um, Dolores's daughter, Holly, doesn't use a form, and yet she can get this nice evenness to her baskets without a form. Okay. And I only use it just because it helps me to hold my basket in shape. A lot of people use forms. There were sometimes wooden forms or, you know, that people use, but most mostly they didn't use forms. We saw a couple of the half forms at Dolores' studio, and those were very nice. Yes, yeah, so, yeah. So I have nice. a couple of half forms at home, too, and I'm always collecting glass containers to weave around or, you know, special containers to weave around. This this is kind of a fun little, little thing that I started doing many, many years ago, and, and these are actually woven out of spruce root, and they're little tiny... The, the spruce root is a whole different type of material to weave with, even though it looks very similar to the cedar bark. And um, I actually traveled to the Queen Charlotte Islands, which is south of here, right. with Dolores Churchill to gather this in. And it's, it actually has a shinier texture to it than the cedar bark. And um, I think they're more highly valued, the spruce root basket is, than a cedar bark basket. Um, and this is kind of fun because it put together my love of collecting beads and, and weaving. It's, it's managed Those are to lovely. put them together so that I can... Now, do you have to work underneath a, a magnifying glass or... Well, not yet. <laughs> not yet. You're not like me who has to bring a pair of reading yeah, glasses yeah. with me. Oh, no, they're, they're kidding away so far, okay. usually. <laughs> <laughs> and how long does it take you to weave one of these uh, um, it, particular baskets? You know, baskets? a couple of days. You know, when, once I get the basket woven and then I like, you know, pull out the beads and string it up. So it's not, you know, this, this is a whole concept, there's a whole necklace. So um, I like to, to do the whole thing all at once. So that's, that's kind of a fun, fun thing that I like to do. It it's, takes only a couple of days to finish one and of I these projects where something like this will take a good couple of weeks to do. Exactly. And I, I'm not a very fast weaver. Holly Holly can do one probably in half the time that I do one. Excellent. Yeah. I see you have some abalone here? Yes. yes. And um, some of my favorites are the contemporary glass, but I do like to, you know, use abalone or dentalium shell or, mm -hmm. you know, so it depends. Sometimes I'll try for more contemporary or more traditional type of work. And yeah. I do do a lot of like um, rattle top baskets, which I don't happen to have any today, but um, they have some over at Eagle Spirit Gallery. Okay. I might let you photograph them. That would be excellent. And do you make your own uh, necklace itself? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's 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 strung on a really heavy duty um, beading wire. Okay. Yeah. So they're very yeah, durable. Dolores was trying to show me how to make the string. Oh, yeah. I was very unsuccessful. Yeah. <laughs> she, she told me to go home and practice. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Um, I actually do chill cat weaving and raven's tail weaving, too, and I didn't even think to bring any samples of that. That's okay. Um, where I'm still, I've been doing some weaving with uh, Nathan Jackson's wife, Dorica. Yes, Because yes. she, she completed a robe for him, and I got to watch her robe grow as she was weaving it and um, it's, it's pretty exciting to see a finished project as right. immense as that. It's, it's beautiful. Now on a, a basket like this, how do you start? Do you start with uh, the I start of, with four. Four? And then I continually add it as I go along. And I actually haven't, I haven't clipped the additions. They're, they're still there. So, you know, when I finish the basket, I might decide whether to clip it or not. Okay. Um, Dolores said that on these gathering baskets, they would leave them so that when you're setting your basket on the rocks while you're gathering your seaweed, it will kind of help keep it from falling apart or breaking. And how do you make the transition between the bottom and the sides? Well, there's a one row of three-strand twining, and so um, once you get the basket to the size, you, the diameter that you want it to, you quit adding 
your warts you put adding and then it'll kind of stop growing and then it'll just start going down the sides. No, this one. And then when do you decide where to put the uh, neck design on it? Mm. Is that it's, a personal? It's just kind of a personal <laughs> one because like um, I actually, you know, haven't really have a set Height. standard. So, you know, I, I've looked at some of my old baskets and they were taller and they seemed to be getting shorter and shorter. And I, I was kind of surprised because I thought I was creating the same size each and every time. So now I'm trying to purposely go taller because I, I do like the taller size. And Dolores said that actually um, a basket with the diameter of the basket would be also the same size. As, so, as the height. Right, right. And, how and do I don't know, you know, sometimes I, I figure it out and sometimes <laughs> I don't. You know, so that's about oh, almost 10 inches and, and that's... Nine and a half. Yeah, so it's it's, it's close. You know, it's very close. Of, yeah, if, if, if I we, measure, if we squeeze way, it a yeah. little bit. <laughs> now, how do you attach the uh, handle to the basket? Well, because these are kind of decorative, mm -hmm. they're not actually used. Um, I've just kind of sewn the handle in and then did a flat break for the handle and added a little amulet in there just for a decoration as a signature. Oh, like I said, nice. beads are kind of my favorite, so a lot of times you'll find something in the basket. Now, is this a piece of uh, bone? Yeah, it's bone. Yeah, and I purchased it. I, I mean, I have friends who carve ivory and stuff, but sometimes traveling with ivory, you can't take it into Canada, exactly. so I have to be very careful what I use if the basket's going to go to Canada or, or someplace else. But Typically, a, a woven handle would be a spun handle like a rope, and it would go clear to the bottom so that okay. it could support whatever is in your basket. Because another basket that's very similar to this is a clam gathering, and instead of the warps going straight up and down, they they go diagonal, crisscross. Okay. And then yeah. we also, uh, Dolores is talking about the berry baskets. Mm -hmm. And what is the difference between this type of basket and a berry basket? Well, berry baskets, you know, they would have a big one that they would put the baskets in, or the berries in, but um, they would gather it in a smaller basket and then pour it into a bigger basket. Okay. Yeah. I've actually woven some, my versions of berry baskets. I actually haven't, like, studied them, but... Um, I, I tend to think they're more this size. I know when my grandmother, I mean, they quit using the baskets and started using like tin cans and stuff. And <laughs> they take an old, old um, oh, I, I guess that would be a one pound coffee can and mm -hmm. tie a string on there and pick the berries in the coffee can. And so I figured that was probably about the size of a coffee can. So that's how I decided what size to make my berry baskets. And, and now, you know, and I don't know if that's, how it was when she was young. I, I know back in her day, they actually did use the baskets. Oh, very good. Yeah, my grandmother was born in 1900, and she passed away in 92, so she, you know, had a lot of different things that she shared with me. I mean, she was very excited when I started weaving. I was actually living in Heidelberg at the time, which is a small village west of here, and um, I would take her to class with me and let her sit and watch us because she wasn't going to take the class but she enjoyed the company right. and the ladies and especially Dolores would come from Ketchikan and out to Heidelberg for two weeks and they would speak Haida to each other so oh. I never really knew what they were saying. <laughs> they were probably talking about <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah. yeah, I could tell once in a while, you know, and, um, and so this is my, my dad's mother and so I, I enjoyed you know, I always enjoyed bringing her to class, and I would make sure I'd go get her and, you know, and take her there, and um, she enjoyed visiting with everybody, but my um, mother's family is actually the basket weaver side. Oh, very good. So my mom actually never wove a basket, but her mother and her mother's sister, my aunt, great aunt, were weavers, but my, my grandmother actually passed away when my mom was a young girl, so my, her aunt. My mother's aunt was the one who kind of was a... She became your surrogate grandmother. Yeah, right. yeah, so she definitely, you know... Did she give you any pointers on weaving? Well, it was really interesting because I never actually saw her weave. Uh-oh. <laughs> never saw her weave. When we, I, I didn't grow up in Heidelberg, I grew up in Washington State, but when we'd come in in the summertime, she'd be sewing moccasins. She was always busy doing something, and sewing moccasins in the summer is, you know, what she would sell 
over here in Ketchikan. And so when I started weaving is when I actually found out that she was a weaver and I had been given a couple of baskets that she had woven, which oh, are very nice. precious to me. And they make my baskets look because <laughs> they're so fine and beautiful. They are just the most meticulous baskets, and they're the ones that you see in the museums. Right. And you go, oh, I wonder what, you know, makes you wonder what, how they got their designs and their shapes. And so one of my aunts gave me a basket, one of my uncles gave me a basket. And, and you have them in a uh, nice cabinet yes, for yes, display and, only. <laughs> and I, I allow people to touch everything, but those two baskets are you have special. to be very, very... Right. You know, careful if you touch those baskets. <laughs> and yeah, so they're very special. I mean, it just, you know, I was so lucky to receive those baskets as gifts. Excellent. And um, do you do any type of loom weaving? I do. I do raven's tail weaving and chill cap weaving. And I actually, you know, have only done small projects because I'm still learning on that. I tend to come back to the, the basket weaving because it's so much easier. Um, and the loom weaving takes a lot more time and a lot more concentration so those tend to get put away a lot. I actually have a couple projects going that have been sitting for a while. Um, I think all artists do that. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't so make it's, a difference. it's <laughs> like they're not, you know, totally forgotten. I remember and pull them out once in a while and somebody will ask, well, oh, did you finish that project? And <laughs> then you think about pulling it out again and for, you know, whatever inspiration sometimes it's something will get pulled out and finished and, you know, and that's always a really good feeling, but, and I do a lot of bead work as well, so, you know, there's, um, I do skin sewing, I sew with seal skin and stuff like that Excellent. too, so, yeah, there's always some kind of project going on. <laughs> My and husband actually helps me gather all the material. He's very good at going out into the woods. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's difficult going out here. Um, I tend to find every hole to fall into or have to climb over every big stump or log that's dead fall that, you know, and he's, he's actually like Dolores. I've been in the woods with Dolores before and she's like a deer. She, she moves so fast and gets around so agile and very easy and that's how my husband is too. He gets around in the woods really easy and I'll be stuck in a hole with that. <laughs> and I'm more trouble. I'm more trouble to take out in the woods than anything. So, <laughs> but spruce root gathering it's easy because you you actually are on the beach kind of digging in there. And yeah. what seasons are you doing this? In? Um, the cedar bark is usually the first part of June and the May first part of June. So there's a very small window to gather the cedar bark. Um, and the spruce root there's you know I've I've usually gathered like in April. And but I think it has a longer season for gathering. I think different weavers have favorite times to gather spruce roots. Okay. And what about the yellow cedar? Yellow cedar is, is probably in the May and the first of June as well. Okay. Yeah. And what techniques do you use to dry the, uh, uh, the gathering? Well, um, cedar bark is really nice because you can once you take it off the tree and you take the outer bark off, mm -hmm. you can let it dry at any point. So you can have a great big old strip that you dry. I like to work it right away because it's easier to work it into the little strips. And um, I like to do that right away just, you know, because it's, it's nice to sit down and have all your material worked on. And um, here's a nice little bundle of yellow oh, cedar. Yes. And um, these are nice long ones. And I like to get it to this point right away, but that doesn't always happen because you have way too much to work on because you have to store enough away for the whole year. Correct. And, and I also teach, so a lot of times I need it for my classes. And, um, and are you teaching at the university? I teach through the Totem Heritage Center. Oh, yes, excellent. yeah, it's through the university right, as right. well. And I've actually taught like at the Seattle Art Museum and excellent. we also uh, demonstrate on the cruise ships too. And, and I was asking uh, Chris Hansen uh, regarding the, the classes. Uh, do you mostly do 18 and over? Um, yes. Actually, I've done a couple of classes where we do, the concept was a mother-daughter class. Oh, how and nice. then we didn't want to eliminate the fellas because there's some very, very good men who weave, um, weavers who are men. And um, so we said a uh, uh, parent-child and we're thinking that the parents can help the children if they have a problem. And there, I don't think there was an age limit, but it tended to be like more like 10-year-olds. Mm -hmm. And as it turned out, the kids 
didn't have any problems and they helped the parents. Oh. <laughs> and that was the case. They came in without any concept of weaving and they just watched what you did and, and it just clicked so easy. And, you know, I think as adults, you try to overthink and make it more difficult where the kids just, you know, went along, well, what's so hard about this? And <laughs> I, I've noticed that when I uh, uh, teach the junior high students that mm -hmm. I go into the local schools and uh, mm -hmm. that's what this tape is for. And uh, they're just not inhibited whatsoever. They're not afraid of making mistakes. So, and if they make a mistake, they'll just shrug it off and do it over again. And, yes. and I think a lot of times, since I teach young adults too in the college setting, they're just very uh, exacting. They want everything perfect the first time. Right. And you try to right. teach them that that's not the way it works. And yeah. Even uh, most artists won't show you know all their works because there's some things that don't come out of the studio. Yes, yes. I ride the ferry a lot, and when I ride the ferry, I always weave, and, and it, it gets a lot of questions, and people will come and talk to me, which makes it traveling a lot of fun, because, you know, you can share something that you love to do with somebody, and right. I've, I've had children, you know, who typically would be playing in the little play area and roughhousing and all that, will come and sit. This one young boy came and sat with me, the whole time I sat and rolled <laughs> and asked me questions and he had taken a weaving class and he, he's like, I think he's about 11 years old and he was just so intrigued with the weaving and he was so happy that he got to watch me weave and just asked all the appropriate questions without too many questions and That's very so nice. he was very considerate too so that was really nice. So, yeah. Did you notice that sometimes uh, some of your students like to rush through projects rather than uh, take their time? And Yeah, there's a few. Um, one of the things I know when Dolores teaches a class, I mean, we all have our different styles, and I like to teach what she's taught me, but um, she's also very meticulous and likes everybody to weave a perfect basket so she'll make them take back. You know, and I always leave it up to the student, and this is kind of how I like to do it. I, I'll leave it up to the student if they want to take back two rows, because two rows might have taken two hours to do, and you know, I don't know if they really want to go through that. Um, if they want to leave a mistake in there or not, I leave it up to them, where Dolores will make us go back and fix that mistake. And that's how her mother was, actually. Her mother always, you know, wanted everybody to fix their mistakes, but sometimes I feel like if somebody decides to leave a little mistake in there, um, when they go to weave their next basket, they'll remember that. Right. Yeah, so I, it I won't do, happen again. I do the same thing with my students, uh, whether it be in a painting class or a sculpture class, mm -hmm. if they make a mistake, after they're finished, I'll point it out and I'll say, now it's your opportunity. And I tell them, even with my works, if I find an error like mm -hmm. a half a year later, I leave it so I don't make that same yeah. mistake again. Yeah. So, um, so another question is, after you gather your bark, um, what's the process that you utilize uh, to make it into strands like this? I know traditionally people would use their thumbnail and split. Yeah. Um, this is funny because <laughs> I always carry them. Um, Oh, My you're pocket. Swiss Army, <laughs> Swiss Army knife. <laughs> There's a cute little story about this, too. We we're gathering as a family, and my brother was living in Phoenix and for Christmas, and I had lost my pocket knife, and my husband knows, you know, that you never know when you're going to need it. I'm, I don't use it for anything but cedar bark. Uh -huh. <laughs> Wild Alaska women carry pocket knives. <laughs> <laughs> but um, and I hadn't really thought about it because I have a couple of other little knives that I use and, um, and but this one just is a handy one I can carry it not on a plane no not anymore and, uh, <laughs> when we gathered in Phoenix for Christmas my sister-in-laws had nice little boxes you know for under the Christmas tree you know and it was earrings and jewelry and so when I opened my little box my husband had bought me a new knife <laughs> and my sister-in-laws were just like, oh, she's going to kill him. <laughs> but to me, this was just as valuable or more valuable than jewelry. So, I mean, I was really happy, and they were just, like, really surprised. <laughs> but, um, but one sister-in-law, she weaves, 
So she understood the other sister-in-law doesn't, I mean, and it, not that she's materialistic or anything, but it was just <laughs> kind of a surprise when I opened my box and it was a knife and they were just like, wow, that's kind of interesting. <laughs> but I don't use a lot of tools. Um, I use a needle and a knife. Um, I don't think I have my awl with me. I have a little deer bone awl that I use okay. to push my, my stitches together. Um, I'm actually pretty portable. Um, when I travel to Indian markets, you know, I can put this all in a nice little carry-on baggage and carry it with me to Santa Fe or Phoenix when I participate in the Indian markets where, right. you know, somebody like Marvin Oliver, he has to load up a whole trailer and drive. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So that's kind of the nice thing about basketry. Um, it's, it's very interesting because the first time I traveled to Santa Fe for Indian market, I didn't know how Northwest baskets would do, if anybody would even recognize the value of a basket. Um, but I was very well received and I sold out Oh, how nice. Before noon. How, and then you were... <laughs> then I had money to go shopping. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to go yeah. and go to a studio and start yeah, working again. No, no, no. no. <laughs> it's, it's fun. Um, it's, it's fun to share this with people from all over the world. Um, here in the gallery, sometimes I'll be leaving when it's quiet. You know, I'll have you know, tucked away back here and people will ask. Um, they had a weaver's workshop out in Thorn Bay last week and... Weavers know that I'm back here mm -hmm. in this little gallery, and they'll come seek me out. And actually, they'll bring their baskets in to show me what they've worn. Oh, how nice! So they'll share with me too what they've done over the week and the workshop. So that's always fun. Um, I tend to get found pretty easy back here. If somebody's looking for a weaver, some of the other shops will point me out. You know, I mean, right. I've been here a long time, so a lot of the different shops know that I'm back here and will point me out to other people. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Um, what other shows do you do besides the uh, one in Santa Fe? Yeah, um, the Heard Museum in Phoenix. Oh, yes. Very and good. I used to do one in Portland, but that one kind of had faltered and, you know, but Phoenix and Santa Fe are the big markets that I do. And I also do one in Anchorage, the Alaska Federation of Natives. And what time of years are those? Um, Santa Fe is in August, and Phoenix, the Heard Museum, is in March, which is a really good time to travel because August is actually difficult for us to travel now. But, because it's um, a lot of tourists. And yeah, so yeah, we're just so busy in the summer, but it's definitely worth it. I mean, uh, that's, that's a difficult one to get in. You have to send in your slides and be juried in every year. You're not automatically in once you get in, and there's 1,200 artists approximately. And that's the longest running, most influential market that there is, is the Santa Fe Indian market. So. And you have to bring all your own uh, uh, setup material. Yeah, or? yeah, your tables and right. yeah. And I, I like to use. I actually have a salmon blanket that I put on my table, and I wear my collar that has a raven design. I'm a mm -hmm. raven clan. So people can see me from way down the street and see that I'm definitely Northwest Coast. Whether they can see the baskets or not, they, they're kind of drawn to see what we have on our table from, from the Northwest Coast. Not, you know, they don't know. Once they get to the table, they'll ask where we're from or, mm -hmm. you know. And I always share a table with my sister-in-law, and she's Seminole Arapaho Indian. And she does coil basketry. Oh, how so nice. So she does a whole different style of baskets. In, she actually does necklaces too that are coiled and coiled basketry lends itself well to doing designs like horses and mm -hmm. you know and she she's very creative in her design so it's really fun to to see that so how many people in your family are artists a lot a lot <laughs> <laughs> a big family actually um, i have a brother who does carvings and and artwork um, but I have a lot of cousins who do different artwork, basket weaving and carving. Excellent, excellent. Have any of your students uh, come back after you've taught them and achieved some sort of notoriety? Actually, um, one of my students, actually she's actually, she started weaving with Holly to begin with. Holly Churchill and I, we both teach beginning classes. Um, Dolores tends to teach more of the more advanced classes now, but um, so she's, 
actually one of Holly's students, but she's taking classes with me. But she participates in the Indian market. Um, she goes to Phoenix twice. She goes to a basketry show in December, which I've never attended that one yet, but she does really well there. And um, then she goes to Phoenix in March, too. So that's, that's nice. Yeah. Very good. What uh, is the typical price of uh, your different items that you brought in today? So well, something like this, like I said, it took a couple of weeks to weave, is about 1500 mm -hmm. And this one is probably more, 400 Okay. And this will actually have about 10 more rows because my design is just getting started. So they'll Correct. be, and it will also have a handle too. And your necklaces? They run 125 Those are beautiful. Yeah. What seems to be the most popular items when you go to some of the uh, uh, shows? Well, I've or tried to figure out popular items. Um, I, it, everything, I mean, I, I do a number of necklaces, so I try to keep a big open price range. Um, one of the best advice I had was somebody said, well, do the big things. <laughs> 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 and, of course, they take a long time, but um, I, I think a good variety. I always bring a lot of necklaces because not everybody can afford a 1500 and I've actually sold a set of them for 2500 and you know so the prices range pretty high to 125 where a lot of people can afford that mm -hmm. and get a little sample of a basket weaving. I'm the so. same way with my artwork. I, I make it for different income so yeah uh, and it yeah. makes it a lot easier and so, so it, it is nice I do a lot of rattle tops that are you know three four hundred dollar range is also a good range those tend to sell pretty fast um, I mean I kind of got that clue from here in the gallery we sell a lot of note cards but we also sell a lot of prints right. so you never know you know what your market will be the minute we run out of necklaces which is the first thing we run out of people will keep coming back and asking us for the necklaces. <laughs> and so the next year, they'll be the first ones waiting in line for a necklace and uh -huh. the first choice at all the necklaces. Excellent. So those are really popular. They're, they're a real popular item. And when you uh, go to the shows, uh, how many items do you pack to bring? Mm, usually a couple of big pieces, you know, at least 10 necklaces and you know, there might be um, five, five of this size basket. Excellent. Yeah, there's, it's, so it's, you know, it's a good hard two months worth of weaving, sitting continually weaving, weaving. I mean, it's one of those things where you think that, oh, you'll get a lot done in the winter time. That doesn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what, your main time for hitting the studios in the winter? Well, it should be. <laughs> it should be. <laughs> you know, um, but life gets in the way. I, at I actually had a few things put away for Santa Fe, you mm -hmm. know, but I have a friend who does tours and she always brings people in to buy the necklaces, so my supply is dwindling. And, <laughs> you know, I had a, some nice baskets that I had saved for Santa Fe and I uh, sold them last week. And, you know, and I do, like I said, uh, Eagle Spirit um, carries my baskets and I always make sure that she gets a. You know, at least once a year, she gets a good choice of what I have before I take off for a show. Excellent. Yeah, so it's, and it's hard. I mean, she doesn't come to me and say, I want this or this or this. She'll come in and have a choice. So. Well, that's good. You, you don't have to maintain a big inventory. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, you know, it would be nice if I could continually weave, but you do kind of have to be inspired. And, you know, it's, I need a, a container of water you know to keep my material moist while I'm weaving it so because when it's dry it's, it's very rigid when it's wet it's it's real pliable so I kind of need a little space for that too so to do that when you wet your material do you use like a distilled water or just regular tap uh, water rain water is the best but tap water is fine um, spruce root I tend to use rain water um, because it, the idea is to keep the basket as light colored as you you could. Mm -hmm. um, my cedar bark, I tend to not get it. I keep it wet enough to make it pliable, but I don't soak it and drench it because then it darkens the colors. Um, this basket that I sold last week was a nice rattle top, and the 
cedar bark was so white it was the color of this this grass it was mm -hmm. just beautiful white and I worked really hard to keep it that light color and um, the lady that I sold it to she was like now how do I get this basket to darken <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> she, she likes the contrast of, you know, as a basket, the cedar bark darkens, the grass stays that light color, so there's a lot more contrast to do the, the design. Do the baskets ever patina? Yeah. In age? Yeah. Yeah, they do. They do. And, and it's just the sunlight or regular light. So, like, this basket that I was keeping so wide, I'd put it in a paper, brown paper bag or keep it covered <laughs> up at night. Or, you know, so I was really being very meticulous about how light I like to keep it. And, she was kind of anxious like, to get it out there so it would darken it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's, it's her basket. She yes. can do it. <laughs> and as you're uh, doing your weave, do you ever use a atomizer or a mister? On yeah, I do, actually. And I always I always keep those handy. Okay. And, um, you know, and I, I use, you know, the cedar bark has sticky to it. So I actually use, like, Vaseline to keep the sticky sap, you know, because you can't just wash it off with water or soap. You need right. an oil base to get it off. And Vaseline I like because it doesn't have an odor and it washes off real easy. And, and it uh, doesn't stain the material? It doesn't stain the material. So, I mean, and this is this is a bowl that I use to soak my, you know, just soak it in there a little while. Or, you know, and I'll spritz my, my basket to, to get it wet. And, like I said, I think I left my um, and just a little pair of scissors. scissors. <laughs> and oh, and here's one of your designs. And this is my design for this basket. So I graph it out. Excellent. Um, but actually, once you get that first row in, it just kind of falls into place. Now, do you just uh, do a, di a drawing on your design, or do you do a drawing for the entire basket? Um, I did for the entire basket. Um, it does. It isn't really necessary, but I'm kind of a visual person, so um, I think it was part, partly just to sit down and weave. I was just playing with my, <laughs> my design, but and I I have um, different. Oh, I don't know if it would be inspiration, but. don't travel as light as I used to, but um, oh, you I've taken portfolio. some... portfolio. No, Excellent. no, it's not a portfolio. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> this is my workbook, and okay. I've actually taken pictures and enlarged it so I can remember some of my designs that I've done, and I have okay. little notes on my designs, and um, this is a little picture that I had enlarged so I can see some of the designs on these really old baskets. Oh, that's gorgeous. And in this, this book, these baskets sold for... 25 cents and 250 oh $2.50 cents was an expensive basket which is probably one of these big big baskets so that that also I mean oh, that kind of gives a visual oh, too yes yeah so that's when I need wonderful. inspiration I kind of pull that out um, is that yours in there? this this one is mine right here oh, so they, the they put me on the, oh. the Santa, Santa Fe yeah <laughs> prize-winning <laughs> basket you did <laughs> Uh, yeah. Excellent. Yeah, usually, um, I'll have some type of ribbon on my baskets. Excellent. So that's always always helpful. But I try to keep a little. They're not professional photographs, certainly, but you know, just an idea of what I've done, and you know, so. I can you go through and uh, tell us a little bit about each uh, format of the baskets? Sure. <coughs> Excuse me. This is this is one of the berry baskets. And I have done a like a series of them. Um, this one's a little tiny rattle top. It looks like a big basket, but it actually is is this size. Oh. Gorgeous. And it actually has a rattle in the top too. Uh -huh. With beads, I like to use the beads. And this is actually a clam basket, and you can see the crosses in there. And it, when I look at it, it's much shorter than this basket. Mm -hmm. So there's another berry basket, and then. Sometimes I just have fun. Um, this is a plated and twined basket. Mm -hmm. uh, I worked with this wonderful doll maker, um, Mary Ellen Frank from Juno. Uh -huh. And she asked me to weave some little baskets for her dolls that sit about this high. And 
I was at a show in Juneau and she asked if she could display this doll on my table and it looks exactly like my grandfather my grandmother oh, um, geez. on my dad's side the, the grandmother who sat and watched me weave right I was so I was like have you, oh. done, have you done many collaborative works like this? um just I think just, just that one just her yeah and I, I love her dolls I they're just the most beautiful dolls I know she's like way back in her orders they're hard to hard to come by it's another berry basket and you and know, is I have this my little the uh, pattern that you're going to do on this one? Um, very similar? Very similar, yeah. Actually, it's going to be more like this one, the okay. cresting wave. And then that one is a um, Hudson Bay blanket, which is similar to this one, but I've included a T in that. And there's a design on the lid as well. Mm -hmm. um, some of the weavings, this one's a drinking cup, and it's actually over at the Discovery Center in their permanent collection. Um, I think we probably saw a, it. I probably they, took a photo have, of it. <laughs> um, three plated mats. They have two baskets, and they're filled with berries. One's yes. a seaweed and one's right. a clam. Those, those are both mine. Oh. And um, I've got photos a, of them. A hat, a mm -hmm. lumpy bumpy hat. <laughs> so I have seven things over there in that collection. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Um, Anchorage has the Anchorage Art Museum has a big basket as well as the Anchorage um, Native. Um, museum there has one as well as the uh, airport in Anchorage has mm -hmm. one. Very yeah. good. So I don't know if there's much much more to my my little workbook than that. Well, um, that one of the things <laughs> this is really funny um, the the rocks I was kind of intrigued with these rocks. <laughs> I, I love the texture. I love the contrasting texture um, between your baskets and the this rocks. Was, this was when we were in, in Phoenix um, out in the hotel, the driveway had this nice little thing of rocks. And mm -hmm. My sister-in-law, we try to take pictures before we put stuff on the table the next day because I know they're not going to last. And so we ran outside and we throw, set them all out on the rocks and we were taking pictures and here we're like crawling around. <laughs> out in the driveway people are driving by and she said oh they probably think we're praying or <laughs> no, i don't know what they think they're driving by really slow looking at these silly ladies climbing around in these little driveway of rocks <laughs> but yes we do silly things no. that's everybody and this is, does you know in different museum ones if i like a design too i i like to take pictures oh, of yes. it in my workbook and and see if i can you know do something like that i have and like i say there's little sometimes little amulets inside right them. i have my students do the same thing i make sure that they have a, a journal and uh -huh. they cut out uh visuals or photos of things they they like so they have a reference and, yeah. and they don't understand that uh Art is a lot of research, <laughs> and uh, they think you just go out and do it. And I said, no, you have to do your homework first. So. Yeah, and so this one is in Santa Fe. Oh. Like I said, you can see, right. see my collar, my raven design from far away. My cousin did that for me. Oh, that's My sister-in-law wears one, too, even though she's not from this area. She's, mm -hmm. you know, like kind of, you know, people tend to find us from looking at our designs. Exactly. There's some ribbons on that one. Oh, yes. But, um, and there's that oh. collection that I did last year. Nice article. Yeah, yeah. And there's there's Marvin. Oh, yes. <laughs> there he is. This is our, on our way to market. <laughs> um, sometimes friends will send... Um, Debbie had started weaving the same time I did, and she sent me some pictures of her, her work, so that's always fun to see. That's very inspiring. Uh -huh. to see somebody else's work and yes. um, that's fun my husband always says this is their Christmas greetings and he's, <laughs> my son said oh yeah they always send pictures of dead animals <laughs> 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 this is also a museum piece this is in um, Phoenix at mm -hmm. the Herd Museum so you know these are just to get ideas right and so that's kind of a workbook that I use and you know there's there's usually you know, graph paper sitting around. Oh yes. I count my warps out and decide what my design's going to do. Sometimes it'll be work out perfect, and sometimes it turns out something different than what I started out doing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we call those happy accidents. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was um, when I was teaching in. Um, what did I teach? 
in March. I was teaching and I had this basket finished. And um, we, we had got to the design part. And some of my students are advanced students and some of them are beginners, but the advanced students. And when we weave a basket, we weave upside down, so we're coming this way. And after, you know, we were talking about mistakes and pulling back. And after I was talking about that, I started looking at my design. And this top band has three rows right there. And so this band here should match too, but there's only two rows. So I discovered my big boo boo <laughs> <laughs> during my class that I was teaching. Oh, well, that's, that's but always okay. It's, it's one of those visuals where, um, you know, if I didn't tell people, they wouldn't notice. Right. But right. it's, you know. But Even after you all notice. these years, I can make mistakes too. Right, right. And <laughs> but one of the reasons I ended up with the amulet, um, I was demonstrating at the Heritage Center. They used to have a program when the tours come through. We'd have a table where we'd demonstrate our basket weaving. And um, I had, oh no, they had a different color. Okay. They, um, I had. The first basket I wove is a rattle top, and I gave it to my husband. Well, my kids were little at the time, and they'd gather little seashells and rocks, and they mm -hmm. put it in the basket. And when I was demonstrating, I was sitting at the table, and I let people touch the basket because, you know, I think it's it's nice to touch. And um, this little boy, you could just see his eyes over the table, and he was really, he put his hands behind his back. And <laughs> very very courteous and I said well you can pick it up and look at it it's fine if you want to touch the basket and he's like really okay because he really wanted to touch it and he picked up the basket and he opened it up and the seashells were in there and he's like wow <laughs> <laughs> he was so amazed and it was just lit up his whole face and then I think at that point is when I decided I, I like to put something in the baskets and that's kind of how the little the ambulance, ambulance started. started yeah so I, I like to put something in there that's kind of a surprise or a that's, treat. That's yeah. very nice. Yeah. Uh, probably one of the last questions is as you're finishing up a basket and you're coming up to the top, mm -hmm. what type of technique is used to get this nice edge? Well, um, I know probably like four or five different endings and so when I, I do a big basket that's not going to have a lid, you can end it on the outside, but a rattle top will have, you know, a, a, ending on the inside and the ending on the outside so they don't grab each other when you're lifting the lid off. But um, this is actually a two-strand twine ending, and I don't know that it has a particular name. Um, Dolores' daughter, April, actually knows there's like 20, you know, I'm not sure of the numbers, but there's like 21 different endings, and April knows all 21, and I don't know anybody else. I haven't heard of anybody else that knows you know, I'm sure Dolores knows all the endings, too. Well, she told us she knew 17, but I 17, think she, yeah. Yeah, and I, you know, I've, I've <laughs> actually done baskets, just plain baskets, and had Dolores teach me different endings. And um, so there's a lot of endings I don't know, but I tend to use ones that I like to do. So, you know... Um, on some of the gathering baskets, you'll see a more heavy type of a ending just to make it a sturdier basket. Mm -hmm. So that kind of depends on something like that, too. Um, well, this has been excellent. Uh, I, thank you for your time. Sure, and sure. It's been wonderful. Sure.